Uh, welcome to the GG Report, ladies and gentlemen. I'm happy to have uh, you back on the show. Uh, this is a, a great uh, moment. Today, it's going to be a very, very interesting conversation. We are going to focus on a bit of technical stuff, but uh, I'm sure you're going to enjoy the show today. Uh, I have a special guest with me on the GG Report today, uh, my friend, long time, uh, friend indeed uh mm -hmm. professor abraham wahima welcome to the show thank you gg very glad good. to be here very good very yeah. good yeah. now the gg report is a platform where we uh, discuss a uh, broad range of uh, issues and uh, subjects today we're going to focus on uh, somewhat technical subjects but i believe you're going to follow through and you're going to learn a lot of things we're going to look at uh, the research and public policy we will look at how that influences uh, development and um and my guest is the most fitted person to discuss <laughs> this subject with me uh, <laughs> professor waidima um let me introduce to you professor waidima um yeah. professor waidima is an associate professor of economics yeah. uh, at daystar university that's true and uh you studied for your phd in the university of cape town in south Correct. africa that's right excellent mm. so uh professor waidima brings in uh, a lot of uh, very uh deep experience and uh, knowledge mm. uh, but what is interesting is uh, we're going to make sure that uh, this conversation is uh we will dwell on uh, normal you know we're not going to make it too complicated <laughs> but uh, we want to make sure that uh, we speak a language that uh, everyone can understand true very good uh and um before we proceed uh, we want to acknowledge our host today we're being hosted at after 40 hotel uh, this is located on, in the cbd of nairobi is an excellent place a place where you can come and enjoy a cup of coffee accommodation and uh, other services so welcome to the show so professor yes sir uh, I would like you to introduce yourself. All right. And um, a little bit more because okay. uh, I've only touched a little bit on, uh, I've given a very brief uh, introduction. So please introduce yourself. And uh, in particular, I want you to describe your career mm -hmm. uh, journey in uh, the academia, where okay. you began from and how you ended up uh, where you are today as a professor <laughs> uh, of economics. Uh, thank you, Gigi. You know, uh... It's interesting <laughs> when one have got to introduce himself. Yes. Uh, I grew up in a place called uh, Kinango. Mm -hmm. uh, that's in Nyandaro. Yes. And uh, went to a primary school, mm -hmm. the, 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 the dusty primary schools that you know of. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, Ragia Primary School. Okay. Uh, and grew up in the village just like anybody else mm -hmm. uh, with all the struggles mm -hmm. that uh, anyone would go through in the village. Yes. Uh, after primary school, uh, I did well and went to a secondary school mm -hmm. uh, called Daragua. Okay. Let, me, let me acknowledge all these schools <laughs> because uh, <laughs> they are part of the journey. Yes. Daragua was a mixed school. Oh, okay. <laughs> in those days. Yes. Except that it didn't have boarding facilities for boys when oh, I went. Okay. All right. So you can imagine uh, moving away from your home, uh, 70, 60 kilometers away, mm -hmm. uh, and you're having to rent a place to, to stay. Okay. So for Form 1, I did that. Okay. Uh, cooking for yourself and managing things uh, which you were not used to. Mm -hmm. You are in the comfort of a home. Wow. Uh, but in Form 2, uh, managed to get some uh, structures there in the school mm -hmm. and uh, there was boarding facility. Okay. So one would then concentrate a little bit more. Okay. After Daragua Secondary School, mm -hmm. uh, uh, again, after O-Level, I went to A-Level. Okay. Those were the A-Level days. Yeah, those were the days <laughs> when we started the... Four years in uh, high school, uh -huh. and then, uh, secondary school, and yeah. another two years in uh, high school, what so, we are calling high school, A-levels. Thank you. Yes. So I went to Muhoho High School, okay. which is in Gatondo, okay. uh, which is a bit of a contrast. Uh, now, this was a boys' school, okay. and um, I was admitted to do MG Con. 
Oh, okay. mathematics, geography, and economics. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> and, and had very good teachers. Uh -huh. they, they were drawn from all over uh, okay. East Africa. So I had a teacher drawn from uh, Uganda, okay. taught me mathematics. Okay. And I had a teacher from uh, Tanzania who mm -hmm. taught me uh, economics. Oh, okay. so they laid a very good foundation, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, I, I enjoyed my stay there. Okay. A level was very tough. Okay, uh, and uh, that is where the real sieving took place. Yes, the sieving. Uh, <laughs> yes, because now A level were, was very demanding. You yep. are doing only three subjects. Correct, and uh, you really needed to be able to concentrate and, and and make the necessary points to go to the university. That's true. Yes, uh, I was fortunate. I made enough points to go to more university, mm -hmm. uh, and I was submitted to do. Uh, a BA degree, mm -hmm. uh, Bachelor of Arts degree yes. in economics. Okay. So that's where my journey in economics now began. seriously began. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. After after uh, after after more university. Yes. I came to the city. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like everybody else, looking, looking for, for a job, and yes. I was fortunate to get a job. Uh -huh. Um, I think after three months uh, of leaving the university, which oh. was quite something, okay. uh, grateful to God about it. Yes. And then I was fortunate again mm -hmm. to be uh, fully funded okay. uh, to go for my master's okay. in a country that was not very well known then for scholarship. Okay. But I went to Addis Ababa University oh. in Ethiopia. All right. That's why I did my master of science in economics. Master of Science in Economics. Um, yes. So I had uh, faculties who were drawn from Oxford uh, mm -hmm. that were teaching us. So, and the program was very well structured uh, yes. by an organization called uh, uh, African Economic Research Consortium. Okay. Uh, so I did that and then uh, worked briefly as a consultant when I was done. Okay. And then uh, in 1996, Okay. Uh, I began to teach in Daystar. Oh. <laughs> uh, yes. When I landed in Daystar, they, yes. they were looking for somebody who uh, would teach in the School of Business, okay. but teach quantitative uh, courses. Okay. So um, I taught economics, yes, mm -hmm. but quite much of maths courses uh, that apply, of course, to business yes. and economics and then statistics. Yes. That's where my journey uh, began. Okay. So uh, in Daystar, I had uh, quite a bit and uh, taught quite a bit, did a lot of things, went into administration and so forth. Yeah. But in 2006, I found myself, uh, of course, after marriage, after raising a family, you have a family yeah. and children. Yes. Uh, it was time for me now to go uh, for this uh, degree that we all... <laughs> <laughs> for the PhD. Yeah. The PhD is one of those... Um, and again, being in the academia, yeah. the PhD was the next thing that you needed to aim for. It's actually a requirement. I mean, if, yes. if you are if you are teaching in a university, mm. uh, I, I, it's only fair uh, yes. that you <laughs> you acquire that uh, that degree, yes. uh, PhD. So I went to the University of Cape Town okay. in in South Africa. All right, it was a four year program, okay. uh, which had uh, both coursework and thesis. Yes, and. Uh, I enjoyed my stay there. Okay. Things were a little bit different from what I'm used to in Kenya. Yes. But it was it was good enough, a very, very good program. As you know, uh, yeah. University of Cape Town is a leading university in Africa. Yeah, this uh, true. And, and, and so I enjoyed my stay. Yeah. Now, coming back um, uh, to, to Daystar, I was asked to head uh, an institute. Okay. Uh, you know, that trains and equip people, uh, not necessarily the traditional academia. Yeah. So you are dealing with corporate organizations yes. uh, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I, I worked uh, there, headed mm -hmm. that institute as a director. Mm -hmm. And then I recently, not too long ago, got um, uh, an opportunity yes. to head a university. Actually, yeah, that's, that's something that is uh, <laughs> a, a, one of those um, 
you know, milestones, yeah. I would say that uh, it's very, very uh, interesting. So you went to University of Kigali. University of Kigali. University of, tell us, so you you, and you served as the vice chancellor. That, yes. that was a, a real privilege, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, and, and I had the opportunity then to, to work there and, uh, you know, bring whatever change that I could. Yes. Uh, and and so forth. Uh, the University of Cape Town, uh, sorry, University of Kigali. Yes. It's a young university. Okay. Uh, established in 2013. Okay. Uh, and so there, there, there are a number of things that, of course, uh, were needed uh, mm -hmm. from somebody who has then worked in a university for a longer time. Yeah. Uh, so you have known the loops of how a university then function and so forth. Yes. So uh, I, I did that for one and a half years. Okay. Uh, but um, so day start, I had taken leave of absence okay. uh, to, to go to uh, University of Kigali. Yes. Uh, and um, there were a few things that required me then to come back. Okay. Uh, so I'm back to Desta, uh, teaching economics okay. and enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> economics and statistics yes. and enjoying it. Yes. One other bit is that uh, I, I, I am a Christian. Yes, by the way, we, yeah, let's let's talk about your Christian journey because uh -huh. I, I think one of the things that I've known you for yes. and one of the things you, every time we meet and we interact, yeah. uh, you always say, it's by the grace of God. I Amen. thank God for this. Uh, God. This is by the grace of God. So, yes. yeah, so tell us how you, your Christian experience uh, has also been like. Yeah, it's one of, I think, those decisions that uh, uh, you you pray that uh, somebody makes that decision maybe when they are young yes because i think you avoid a number of things <laughs> <laughs> yes you avoid yeah, a lot of you are um, covered <laughs> yes i i god helped me uh, and uh, got born again in 1985 yes i was in form four okay so all these journeys then mm -hmm. uh, through university, through high school, through yes. master's, through PhD, yes. uh, and uh, through my work life, yes. I have done them as a Christian. That's true. And I have been fortunate enough also to serve as a leader mm -hmm. uh, in SITAM, yes. uh, as a member of the deacon board. Okay. Uh, so I have served my two terms okay. uh, and uh, retired, oh, but right. still very active in, in the church. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, have many friends who, who are Christians, so we share faith. Yeah, so that's that's very interesting. So, uh, listeners, um, my guest, uh, Professor Waipima, uh, he's a Christian. He's uh, had a, an interesting journey. He's um, the Lord has taken him through, um, you know, a very long and uh, exciting career. Mm -hmm. And um, so that is very, very, very interesting. So uh, we want to hear more of your yeah. story, mm -hmm. um, and then. And then we go to the technical stuff. Okay. So, <laughs> because we're going to go to the technical <laughs> stuff now. Yes. So you, um, through, of course, you've taught a lot of students. Correct. Uh, you've taught students at master, bachelor's, master's, and uh, PhD level as well. Correct. Uh, and the uh, Daystar University of Kigali, mm -hmm. uh, very interesting. It's, by the way, were you teaching programs when you were at uh, University of Kigali or you just doing administration? Oh, I was doing administration. I think when you are vice chancellor, it's very, very difficult for you to be able to actively teach. Yes. However, I was uh, I was helping postgraduate student. Yes. It's pretty tough. Uh, there, there are too many administrative things that you need to handle. <laughs> okay. Yes. True. Very good. Mm. So now let's talk about um, the this book. Yeah. Because uh, I, when I learned that you've written a very technical book, <laughs> yeah, I, I I thought now nah, I'm going to talk to this man because <laughs> yes. uh, this is a very interesting book, yeah. inferential statistics and data analysis, a okay. technical book. Yeah. So what inspired you to mm. write such a technical book? Okay. Um, on inferential statistics. So yeah, yeah. Tell us about that. Well, um, I'm sure you have heard of this uh, statement yes. <laughs> that there are lies. Yes. There are dumb lies. Yes. <laughs> and then there is statistics. Yes. Um, the, uh, Mark Twain. Yes. Uh, who is, uh, I think that statement is attributed to. Yes. I guess was talking about uh, that uh, you can lie to people, what people call a flip. Yes. Uh, 
you know, or small eye. Yes. <laughs> then there is that which is an outright lie. Yes. Uh, for example, we agreed that we will meet today. Yes. And uh, probably I said yes. And mm. I, I knew I was never going to make it. <laughs> I, I mean, yes, I lied. Yes. But then there is statistics. Yes. Uh, so they say people hide things in statistics. Yes. Hide things in statistics because mm. a number of people also don't want to take the time mm -hmm. to look at the numbers yes. and interrogate them. Mm -hmm. When I went to the university, mm -hmm. I was taught mathematical courses. Yes. I was taught statistics. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was fortunate to have very good instructors. Yes. Uh, very good professors. That's true. Who then explained the concepts. Mm -hmm. But I, I am aware of other people who have suffered. Yes. Uh, and they, they, they never want to see mathematics. Actually, a lot of people, a, a lot of people are very, very, very frightened uh, by mathematics. Eh? And in fact, it's like uh, while we talk so much about the STEM programs, yes, you know, science, technology, uh, science, mm. uh, STEM is what? Science, uh, uh, technology, I technology, think. Technology, engineering, in and mathematics. Yes, correct. So, and uh, it's it's a tough area. It, but let's go back to the statistics. Yeah. Uh, so you decided you're going to write a technical book on uh, statistics. statistics. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, you tell us how. Uh, so. Yeah. Um, the decision was based on if I ever get to teach statistics, yes, I want to teach it in a way that mm. it applies to people. Yes. Uh, and in an enjoyable way. Yes. Someone does not have to suffer through yes. mathematics. Yes. Does not have to suffer through statistics. Yes. Yes, there is rigor in them. Yes. But they can be enjoyed. It's true. So I, I taught statistics for many many years i've taught statistics for many many years i'm still teaching it. yes and uh, my idea was let me put this statistics in a book mm -hmm. that helps somebody to walk through yes uh, and not only the theoretical bit of statistics mm -hmm. because that's where the dryness is yes but how is it that you can make it practical mm -hmm. And the way then to make it practical is to incorporate data analysis. Yes. You know, the way we calculate, uh, you, you are used to carry that calculator. Yes. Uh, these days we have scientific calculators, which you, you can sort out your statistics very fast. Yes. But the earlier days, we didn't have those ones. Yeah, we didn't have uh, uh, those scientific calculators. You added, you accumulated, you divided and, 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 and so forth. And it yes. was laborious. You know, it was rigorous exercise. And, 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 and your, 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 your calculator me jam during the exam. Can you imagine? <laughs> and you're uh, so and, frustrated. And, and no one will allow you to borrow from <laughs> the other person because from, that would be from your classmates. Exactly. So I decided I want to relate those two. Yes. On one hand, you have people then who become good in statistics. Yes. But cannot apply it. Okay. Uh, I was fortunate in the University of Cape Town where I went. Yeah. Right from day one, when you started talking about research. Yeah. Research was seen in the light of statistics, mm -hmm. but they applied a bit of it. Okay. Which is data analysis. Okay. And so I was introduced to this uh, software called Stata. Yes. Um, I hadn't used it before I went to University of Cape Town. Mm -hmm. And I've come to love it okay. because of what you can do with it. Yes. That you can, you know, after your research, mm -hmm. you input your, your data set. Okay. And now you can begin <coughs> learn, then to relate the variables mm -hmm. and then draw meaning okay. uh, out of that. Yes. So this book yes. is about that. Okay. Yeah. It, it's it, how to practically apply, mm -hmm. um, you know, the like for example stata is yep. a software yep uh and then be able to do your analysis yes um i know some of the i, I think what you discover is that um, a lot of students get stuck yeah uh, especially anyone who is going to do a postgraduate program yeah and uh, they will require to do some uh, kind of research mm -hmm. and uh, be able to uh, produce um 
uh, a thesis, yeah. they really, really get frightened by mm. the need to have to do the data analysis. Yeah. So you're saying in this book, mm -hmm. it is ma it, you've simplified the whole idea of data analysis. Correct. Okay. We, what we've done, we've put a data set there. Okay. Um, uh, which is downloadable. Yes. So you download. Okay. So whatever things that we are finding, the illustrations and the examples that have been worked out in this book, mm -hmm. you can actually work them out. Okay. And you'll be able to see the results. Okay. And then get to now make meaning out of that. Okay. And the book then helps you to make meaning out of it. Okay. Uh, so if, if, say for example, mm -hmm. <laughs> you are testing a hypothesis. Yes. Um, so uh, people ask, so what is this? Remember, hypothesis is, a, is an assumption. Yes. When you go to research, yes. uh, you go out there, you have an assumption. Yes. So you want to prove it yes. or to disapprove it. Exactly. And you can only do that with the data. Yes. So um, this book then takes you through the steps. Okay. How then do you arrive at a decision? Okay. Say, for example, somebody is claiming mm -hmm. um, uh, somebody manufactures a product yeah. and they say this is the wonder product. Yes. It will do A, B, C, D. Yes. Uh, you know, take that data. People who have used the product, people who have not used the product, mm -hmm. let's see the difference. Does it really make significant difference uh, with, this, uh, with the use of this product? Okay. So that then you can confirm the claim yes. uh, that is being made by the person who has... Uh, made this product. That's true. That's yes. true. Thank you. So, uh, listeners, um, as you know, that it's, uh, if you open the daily newspaper, yeah. you always find a story that has to do with uh, somebody quoting some research. Yeah. So, research is uh, something that we cannot run away from. Uh, if you, you know, the, it's like everything we do yeah. is guided by research. Correct. There has been a lot of talk about um, mm -hmm. uh, research. You know, for example, the the, the COVID. Uh, 19 situation we yeah, have. Yeah. Um, the, the, the rallying call has been let's stick to science. Yes. Let's do things as science demands. Uh -huh. Otherwise, uh, you, you know, if we don't stick to, we must do things right. Yeah. So, so what you, so what, what you're saying is that research is uh, something that can tell us how people can use research to make decisions. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm. Once again, uh, you know, we, we quoted that uh, statement by Mark Twain. Yes. That there are lies, mm -hmm. dumb lies. Yes. And uh, statistics. Yes. But the reverse is this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that men and women lie. Yes. Statistics don't. Statistics <laughs> don't lie. Numbers <laughs> don't lie. Numbers yeah. don't lie. Yeah, I think Mark Twain's uh, you know quote was like anti antithesis. Yes, correct. Uh, so uh, and basically, it's a way of saying. Uh, I think when you say something opposite, you yeah. emphasize it more. Mm. So statistics really is the way that you can help uh, really make decisions. So correct. You have numbers, you are able to calculate and say yes. Mm. The way the numbers are, mm. this is the way things are. You see, mm -hmm. just coming back to this issue of COVID. Yes. Um, we are told there are drugs that are being tested, yes. the vaccines, mm -hmm. and we are really praying that uh, these things will work mm -hmm. because uh, COVID is really ravaging uh, the entire world. Yeah, exactly. And we want to see a solution to, uh, to this. Yes. But you see, uh, it cannot be introduced to human before you have ascertained yes. that this is safe mm -hmm. for human mm -hmm. and it will do the intended work. Okay. The only way to prove that is introduce it, yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> to the human. Mm -hmm. See the effectiveness of this vaccine. Mm -hmm. Does it work? Does it not work? Yes. There lies statistics. Yes. Uh, because we want to see this thing 99% of the time it is working. Yes. Or 100% of the time. We hope it can be 100%. Yes. But then again, you'll be told uh, among this population, it will be... 99 mm -hmm. among this other population 90 whatever yes uh, because they are they are also uh, all these mitigating issues that that will come in yes so therefore statistics numbers don't lie <laughs> <laughs> statistics and numbers don't lie yes and uh, I, I, people get discouraged um okay. because you know statistics is a difficult subject to study okay, okay. um and, and so you'll find um people really get so how how do how do we 
simplify mm -hmm. the whole uh, study of statistics. Um, maybe, maybe let me ask a slightly different question. Okay. How then you take the the research mm -hmm. to influence policy? How? What's the link between now the research bit of it, the mm -hmm. statistics? You've done your data, you mm -hmm. produce the report. Mm -hmm. How does that? Uh, link up to policy because I believe most of the research is done so that then you can make decisions that influence policy. Thank you. Yeah, I was uh, to answer your question. Yeah. I'll, I'll use it in one of the major researches I've been involved in. Mm. Uh, we were fortunate, um, a number of us, yes. uh, to get some funding. Yeah, of course through Daystar University. Yeah. Uh, to do a major project in yes. Marigat okay. uh, sub county, okay, and we were trying to combat uh, okay. a disease called Leishmaniasis, uh -huh. or Kalaza, whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> Kalaza presented itself as if it's malaria, okay, uh, but it's not. Uh -huh. It's transmitted by a, a, a very tiny insect, one third. Of the size of a mosquito okay called a sand fly okay sand fly will uh, will live uh, in uh, termite mounds okay. uh, you have seen a termite mound yes that's where they they okay. live okay but in the evening mm -hmm. they go looking for food okay and the food is a blood meal okay all right yes uh, they, they prefer animals Okay. But in the absence of animals, mm -hmm. they will bite people. H human beings, yes. Human beings. Yes. Now, if it has those uh, vector, the disease vector, yes, then it will transmit to human. Okay. And if untreated, yes, uh, before long, yes, the person is actually dead. Okay. So we were there to try and mitigate and okay. try and slow down yeah. and reduce the effect of leishmaniasis. Okay. Now we went out there and use the traditional method to try and cover people you gave them nets treated mm -hmm. nets okay uh, just like the mosquito nets mm -hmm. but we also discovered there's something else to it mm -hmm. after now we went on with the research mm -hmm. we discovered those people who live in stick walled houses yeah uh, i don't know whether you will yeah, understand yeah, the houses which are made uh, they, they are they, they, they are they are roofed with grass or something and uh, sticks yes uh-huh and, and you can see it through. Okay. Uh, but you can't blame the people. It's because of the weather there. It's very hot. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, people who then live in those houses, mm -hmm. the sand fly, mm -hmm. once it leaves the termite mountain, it's looking for food. Mm -hmm. It will come inside okay. and then bite. Mm -hmm. So we found that people who lived in those kind of houses yeah. uh, then uh, were, were at risk they were at very, very high risk of getting uh, uh, leishmaniasis. Okay. So what we did, we wrote a proposal mm -hmm. to the donor yeah. and convinced them that if you can give us money to build better houses for these people, yes. we'll minimize. Okay. Good, good. good. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a big story. So we, 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 we'll go in a short break. Okay. Um, then we'll come back to, to that story. So yeah. that then you can show us uh, how you, uh, you know, what you did, the study okay. you carried out. Okay. And then how that then, um, you know, was linked to b developing mitigation okay. for, for that disease. Thank All you. All right. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you are following uh, this conversation. I, and a lot of people get, um, you know, stuck when it comes to research, but uh, there's always uh, help. Yeah. So don't hesitate to seek some help. We'll go on a short break. We'll come back shortly. Thank you. God bless you.